She's awake, y'all. Prepare for some background noise. Welcome back, everybody. Today, I'm gonna talk about some desensitization, socialization techniques that we used with our puppy, Pistachio. I asked you guys what else you wanted to know on the topic of puppy parenting, Havanese parenting, and this was the request, so let's get into it. Number one, not a dog expert. These things worked well for me and Pistachio and our family. These might not work for you and somebody else might not agree with these methods. Disclaimer number two, I am pregnant and you can tell. So you will notice that in some of the clips in this video. So just wave hello to the bump as it passes by your screen. So the goal of socialization, desensitization with a dog is to create positive or neutral associations with triggers. And when we don't teach our dogs to have positive or neutral associations with them, we can end up with reactive dogs, which can either range from just being barky and obnoxious to aggressive. So let's avoid that. Our formula for socialization was sort of a three-part formula. Number one, expose the dog to triggers without forcing an interaction. Always remember folks, you do not owe everyone the ability to interact with your dog. If somebody asks to pet your dog or comes up to your dog, you can always just say, we're training right now, so no thanks, have a great day. And people will get over it or they just won't even care. Number two of this formula, we wanna build the association between triggers and rewards. For a lot of dogs, rewards are treats, and that's what we've used with pistachio primarily. And then number three, have triggers around as early as possible, either from a young age or as soon as you have your dog. So what can we do with a young puppy who might not have all their shots yet? And we want to introduce them to the world and any triggers in it. First, handle all parts of their body. This is really important so that they don't start guarding certain parts of themselves that they don't really like to be touched. And it's important so that we can care for them properly in the way that we need. You may need to look at the belly of your dog when they're recovering from a spay surgery. You may need to handle their paws when you're trimming their nails or a groomer's trimming their nails. And most of all, we just don't know how other people will touch our dog and we don't want them to ever have a aggressive reaction when somebody decides to scratch their ears and they're not used to having their ears handled. The great thing is this gives us an excuse to cuddle with our dog plenty, hold them often, use opportunities where you're petting them to just work your way from a familiar area to maybe a non-familiar area. For instance, when Pistachio was a puppy, we used to just like squeeze her paws all the time when we were holding her, like just pull some like that. And I don't know why, I think it's just because their paws are so scrumptious and adorable. And to this day, she's very comfortable with us touching her paws and we'll still do it just in a loving way. And I think she feels the love through that. So kind of going off of being used to being handled, get them used to wearing clothes. I talk about this in other videos, so I won't get into it too much. But I don't say this because clothes are just cute, but clothes can serve a practical function someday if they're using a surgery recovery suit or if it's cold out and they need a sweater, you're just gonna be happy that they practiced when they were tiny tots. Now, as far as walks, which are like the absolute best place for socialization opportunities, you may be thinking you can't walk a dog that's not vaccinated yet. And let me tell you, this is when the good old dog stroller, no matter how tacky, comes in handy. You can also use a doggy backpack carrier or something like that, but you just want to take them with you as maybe you go take a walk so that they can see people, see dogs, hear dogs bark, have cars drive past them, all of those sounds and sights that we want to make sure that they've experienced before they necessarily even interact with them. There's also some great dog-friendly establishments that you can bring your dog to. Some of those include the Holy Trinity, Home Goods, TJ Maxx, and Marshalls. And then also home improvement stores often allow dogs. So you can bring them to Home Depot, Lowe's, something like that, and either walk them or just keep them in the cart if they're small enough, like I have a niece. And of course, pet supply stores usually allow pets inside. So maybe not a great thing to do if your dog is fully unvaccinated, but it can be a fun thing to do down the road to get them used to all sorts of critters. Okay, so moving on to sort of the general socialization opportunities for any dog. Like I said, walks are the best way to do this. We always treat our puppy, we give her a treat. Keep treats accessible, keep them on you. I always keep them in like a cross body fanny bag thing so I can just reach in there with one hand. We will treat her whenever we pass something that could have been a threat or just kind of triggering someone riding on a bicycle past us, 
A very common thing is we're walking past somebody's house and a dog barks. And it's startling. Sometimes that can ruin a walk. I've had times before where that spooked her so much that she just wants to, you know, zoom away and pull on the leash and neither of us are having a very good time. So instead, even if she hasn't reacted yet, as soon as I hear or see something, I will give her a treat. And we keep walking. Don't pause for your dog's reaction. You just keep walking and you treat them once you've made it past. But we want to continue making them think, oh, something weird happened. Oh, I'm distracted. I've had a positive release of food goodness. I give a treat to our dog every time we pass another dog. And I've noticed she pulls so much less now at other dogs. You know, when you cross other dogs on the street, some of them might bark, some of them might pull because they want to be friends. Some of them might pull because they have mean intentions. And I really have loved seeing Pistachio not reciprocate the way that the dogs interact with them. She'll often look at them. She might, you know, be interested but she'll keep moving, she keeps walking, she doesn't just pause. And that's because we've treated her consistently and we don't pause for her reaction there. So what's the best way to socialize your dog with other dogs? Well, first of all, just have them see or hear or play if it's safe with other dogs from day one, as soon as you can. Meeting other dogs on walks is a great way to just have quick spurts of interaction without overdoing it. And if both dogs are reacting positively to each other as you walk past, which is usually, you know, tail wags, there's a different tone to the bark and a lot of like reciprocation, then it might be safe to say, oh, can they say hi and give them an opportunity to sniff each other. And again, it should be, you know, they're taking turns sniffing. They might, you know, bow a little bit and want to play or just lay down and let the other one sniff them. Those are all really good signs of doggy interaction. It's great to encourage that friendliness if you are seeing your dog react that way. Now, if your dog is obviously terrified of another dog at passing, whether they're being super territorial or, or they're just terrified and scared, don't force an interaction. Our dogs don't need to be BFS with other dogs, but we do wanna to try to build up those positive interactions with other dogs. And maybe that's just gonna come through treating a lot when you pass another dog. Another thing you can do, dog parks can be a little controversial. I'm not going to recommend anyone just go to a dog park, but if you are to go to a dog park, you can let your dog just sniff the other dogs and watch what's going on through the fence. Don't bring them into the play area. Just keep them on a leash, sit on a bench and let them see what's going on, let them sniff around. And I think they gain a little bit of like social intelligence there of how to interact and play with each other. And then you can also see if they're reacting positively to sniffing other dogs through the bars. And if your dog park has a small dog area, even better. As long as all the dogs in there are playing nicely and you probably your dog should have pretty good recall if you're gonna go in there. They might just turn into a social butterfly getting to know all sorts of little dogs in there, making friends, learning manners, all that good stuff. And beyond dog parks, play dates are awesome. The first dogs we introduced our baby pistachio to were all of our family's dogs because we knew first that they were, you know, healthy dogs. We trusted their owners and their training, so we could do that with a high degree of confidence. And when Pistachio was very young, we got to introduce her to them. I liked being able to do it young because it sort of felt like it hadn't been too long since she'd seen her litter mates and she wasn't so rusty in the social department. A tip I have for introducing dogs to each other, especially for a play date, is do it outside. Find a nice neutral area. Sometimes if you're inviting another dog into your home, your dog might feel kind of territorial of an animal coming into their space. So if the initial introduction is done outside or even in a backyard, I think there's just better chance for success and less intimidation. So try that first before bringing the party inside. Okay, so socializing with kids, babies, toddlers. As you can imagine, this is high priority for us right now, but we don't have a lot of opportunity to do that because we don't know a lot of babies. So here's my recommendations as someone who doesn't know a lot of babies. First of all, your dog does not have to be besties with any children. I don't need our puppy to be our baby's protector, bestie, whatever. I just need them both to respect each other's space. And for the beginning part of that journey, when the baby's young, it's going to look like pistachio learning to respect the baby's space. So we just want to build up that positive, positive, positive association of having a child around, but not forcing an interaction there necessarily. So some things that we have done is go to the playground. We take walks to our playground. It is a hub of chaos, trust me. But just try to find a bench a little bit out of the way where your dog can see all the children, but not necessarily gonna get stepped on by a kid. And let them observe. Give them treats while they observe. And if a kid comes up to you and asks to pet your dog or doesn't ask to pet your dog, 
there's two things that I say. One thing I'll tell them is, so Pistachia makes friends through sniffing people. Can you let her sniff you first? Because otherwise kids just go for the head. There's just something about that. And really no dogs really like being petted head first, especially by a stranger. It's just a very vulnerable area. And then the other thing I do is I ask them, do you want to feed the puppy? And most kids love that. It's the petting zoo experience. So I take some of my treats out of my pouch that I always have and I give them to the kid and I let them hand feed her. And even if she's feeling a little bit nervous, she's gonna take the food. So I'd rather it come from the child than it come from mommy. Last time we had a kid in our home, we just used a sit and stay command and kept giving her treats while she watched the baby have some time on the floor. I didn't need her to play with the baby. I just wanted her to be able to be calm, be rewarded for being calm and see what was going on. Okay, sorry, we had to change locations. My husband just came home and Pistachio and him are having their father-daughter reunion and I don't wanna interrupt and I also do not want them to interrupt me. <laughs> okay, a few notes for guests coming into your home. Have guests come into your home as early as possible. It's good for your dog to meet different types of people. When those guests can give your dog treats or they can play with your dog or if your dog's a cuddler, cuddle with your dog. It's just gonna build up those positive connections with strangers or with people that aren't family. Just let people come in, keep your voice calm. The dog will maybe match your energy, not guaranteed, but it just helps to keep things calm, to show that you're confident, display that confidence so your dog can feel confident too. Another thing that I would recommend is bringing your dog to a groomer, not only because it saves you a lot of time and trouble with grooming, and we know have a niece need a lot of grooming, it gives a trained stranger the opportunity to handle your dog and just help them that much more with some desensitization to being touched. So I'll close with just sort of a checklist of triggers I'd recommend you use this little three-part checklist with that we discussed. Other dogs, babies and children, men, especially men who are tall, have facial hair, or have a deep voice. I have seen this over and over again that dogs tend to be a little bit more cautious around people with those characteristics and men tend to have the most of the time. Even though Pistachio adores her daddy and her grandpa, and they are both tall men with facial hair and deep voices, she has been showing a lot more fear of men as she gets older, actually. So socialization and desensitization, I don't think really ever stops. You gotta keep exposing your dog to stuff to keep them sharp. And if something changes their mind and starts making them more fearful, you want to reintroduce those positive associations. So we had a maintenance man in our home recently who fit all those characteristics and she was pretty freaked out when he'd be trying to pet her. I did give him the opportunity to feed her a treat and it didn't really fix it. So rather than force the interaction, I sent her to her safe space, which was her bed, and I kept treating her while she just relaxed there and watched this man in her home. If she can't be friends with someone, I just want her to still feel safe and hopefully able to relax with the presence of the trigger. Kind of like the men one, like just introduce your dog to people who look different from your immediate family. This could be people outside of your ethnicity. It could be people with different languages or accents. I think it's just good for your dog to see all sorts of people so that they're not shocked when they encounter one in the world. And last but not least, a few do nots. Um, do not bark back at your dog, even if it feels funny. If your dog is barking, it's because they are triggered. And whether you're barking back as a joke or you just keep telling them, no, 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 it kind of sounds like barking to them. It's better to keep the energy very calm with whatever correction you give. And I would say, especially for barking out of windows, we'll often just try to remove the trigger calmly if they don't react to the no, or we usually use mm-mm, which she's learned pretty well, mm-mm. So we'll just close the blinds for strike two and she loses what she was fixated on. I think with barking, that's a lot more helpful than just constant verbal correction. Also, if your dog is showing fear to a certain trigger, like you're passing a dog and your dog is either being aggressive towards that dog or just really freaked out, don't pick up your dog. Picking your dog up when they're afraid is kind of just reaffirming to them, almost like they had the right to be scared. And then also that you will always swoop in and protect them and they don't need to learn some resilience. So when you can, when it's safe, you just keep your dog moving. Keep them walking past that dog and then you can say, good job, you know, give them a verbal affirmation, give them a treat. However they can feel most rewarded for that experience is best. So those are my tips. I hope they're helpful for you. So I hope your puppy makes a lot of friends or a lot of neutral neighbors. Best of luck.